Hey everyone, my name is Taylor Sparks. I'm the Editor-in-Chief at IMMI, Integrating Materials and Manufacturing Innovation, and I'm here to talk about a new paper. It's called Materials Informatics Tools to Analyze Crystal Structures. And the case study where they're going to use that tool is in the Erbium Cobalt II Indium system. Now this paper comes from researchers at a number of universities in Ukraine, in New York, in Denmark. Um, it's led by corresponding author Anton O. Olienik, friend of ours, an amazing chemist himself. Um, and what they're getting into in this paper is they point out by saying that, okay, the intermetallic rare earth transition metal indium systems, um, they've attracted a lot of interest because they have a lot of cool properties. And specifically, the one to one composition is really common, but there's multiple different structure types that can exist. And sometimes as you go across the series, across, for example, the actinide series, it'll switch from one type to the other type. And they talk about lots of examples of this and ultimately point out that you know, this PrCO2 gallium and TbCO2 indium type ambiguity between these two different types. Um, first off, it's, it's impossible to distinguish from X-ray diffraction. You have to do single crystal. It's a crystallographic challenge. And so it needs to be solved with a proper understanding of the properties of these phases. And therefore, to do that, they say, we've developed, well, they've extended two in-house developed software for the purpose of addressing these problems. Namely, they have sieve site analyzer and sieve bond analyzer. And what these are going to be able to do is combine uh, site composition heat maps and statistical bond analysis to reveal underlying atomic arrangements that lead to the crystallographic ambiguity uh, that you would miss if you used other tools. So this work does build on other tools um, and extends the work of other tools that are out there for, uh, for featurizing the, the crystal structure, right? For example, one of them that comes to mind is this paper uh, entitled Local Structure Order Parameters and Site Fingerprints for Quantification of Coordination Environment and Crystal Structure Similarity. This comes from Zimmerman and Jane. And there's others like this. But essentially what they've built here, and you can see it in their GitHub, is they've built a tool that's going to pull out information from the sieve carts in a high throughput way and generate interesting heat maps and demo and um, and fingerprints for these things for lots of different sieve cards. Now, of course, these are chemists and physicists that did this. So unsurprisingly, when they're talking about these structures, they actually grew these materials. They grew single crystals of them. They did really good analysis, including single X, uh, single crystal X-ray diffraction. So they know exactly what structure they have. And a bunch of the paper to start out with is them explaining what the different structures are. And then they get into the software development. So there was two software packages that they're putting together and extending here. The first is this sieve site analyzer. And again, it says, we developed the site analyzer to parse a given list of sieves and output the composition summary of each site in the sieve card, right? The composition at each site across all the sieves can then create a periodic table heat map to show you the span of composition belonging to those sites. And it says the primary utility of this tool is, to, is the analysis of chemistry on sites in a structure type in the overall composition. The second tool they built is this one, the sieve bond analyzer. And this is now an interactive command line Python application designed for high throughput extraction of what they're considering this most important parameter, which is the minimum bond length, right? Typically the neighbor that is closest to another atom is the one that's going to have the largest chemical impact on it. And so what they're pulling out is what that neighbor is in a really high throughput way. It says CBA generates histograms for a graphical overview of the shortest bond length of each site or element, and then a text file that enumerates bond pair counts and unobserved bonding pairs. And what this basically does, is it simplifies the crystal structure analysis by automating the extraction of these shortest bond lengths, which is gonna be crucial for you know, geometric configurations and identification of irregularities. Let me show you an example. So sort of skipping a lot of the really great crystal chemistry and getting right to the new digital tool that they've built. Take a look at here. What you're seeing here is there's five different columns representing different, uh, you know, you've got your rare earth and then you've got cobalt and indium. And the rare earth is changing from dysprosium, holmium, erbium, all the way to lutetium, right? And what they're showing you is the different site fingerprints and what's bonded to what basically. And they point out by boxing these in red, these top three here and these two ones here, the ones that seem to be the, the sharpest and the most numerous interactions. And they're clearly showing you that there's a change, right? As you go across this series, it's switching from one type to the other. And this is a really good way to uh, demonstrate that there's a change in the crystal chemistry happening here. And then obviously you can use the same tool at arbitrary points here in this ternary space. What you're seeing is these cool diagrams that this software package can create where it's showing you, for example, the red represents that the shortest uh, minimum bond length is an indium indium bond. Yellow is a cobalt indium. 
Purple is this erbium, indium. And you can see that at different compositional uh, spots on this diagram, pulling from sieve cards, that the bonding's changing, right? Here it's changing from a cobalt indium bond, here it's an erbium indium bond, and there's even degrees of, of sort of in the middle between them, and this can be used to then map it to change in the crystal structures that form. So I'm excited about this. I think that this is a useful tool in an area where we haven't seen enough useful tools showing up in materials informatics, and that is structure uh, fingerprints and ways of pulling structural features out of sieve cards, which are going to be useful for informatics approaches that use those for predictions as features. So take a look at it. They've got a great GitHub site. They've released the code. They've made it dead easy to use. This is really great. They've got some really cool examples on how you'd actually use this. And I think it's going to be a useful set of tools to complement uh, what we have for describing features as a function of structure in materials.